how in the heck are y'all doing welcome back to the channel it's just another glorious gloomy rainy day here in western Colorado it's been raining all day long this is the first kind of clearing we've had all day it's we had about three days of sun and hot and other than that since like the past month it's just been pouring rain which I'm not complaining it'll be nice but it's probably gonna mean we're gonna have cold winter I'd rather a cold winter than a overly hot summer so pray for that but what we are doing today like I said in the last video we're gonna get a injection pump mounted on this sole turd um, because we got to beat this thing again and I'm just well I do want to beat him again but I actually want to beat him in a race this time last time we ran him the on three intercooler packed its bags and headed south for the winter so um, he was well out on me and I went around him right as right as she came apart but we're gonna have a good race this year between the two girls and that's why we got to get this pump on the party pump but yeah that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna get the pump on um, maybe injectors and injector lines um, me and Wes are talking about doing some custom one-off injectors that haven't been tried yet just trying something new if not my, I still have my marine injectors that I put in last year that are basically brand new the, either those will go in this or those will end up in the dually engine and we are going to try the uh, custom modded injectors in this setup but we'll for sure get the pump on get the gear on uh, get it close to base timing just to get her started I'm probably going to set it close to what I had it last year which was about 20 degrees of timing um, with these bigger uh, modded injection pumps you lose the dynamic timing so you have to run a lot of uh, base timing to make the power up top because you don't have that dynamic timing curve as your RPM increases. So that's kind of why in a lot of my videos you've seen my truck kind of lopes at idle a little bit and was a little bit hazy, a little bit of white gray smoke. Um, that was due to the timing. So I'm probably going to set this pump pretty close to what I had my setup last year around 20 degrees which you skip one gear advanced on your injection pump gear and then you can kind of tweak it from there um, with your injection pump bolts and adjusting it and stuff like that but what we're going to do is get the pump on get the gear on I have it let's look here I don't know if you can see but I got the timing mark right here there you can kind of see it a little better got the timing mark lined up I have TDC lined up in the mark it's kind of hard to see there but you can see the line on the fluid dampener zero zero right here in this big wedge so I got it TDC so we can get the pump on um, I didn't mess with any of the cam timing or anything like that because I left the short block together just changed the heads and stuff so let's get this phone put up and then we'll get this pump slapped on uh, get the gear put on uh, throttle linkage brackets stuff like that so let me get you guys propped up and we will start putting a pump on okay I got kind of got the phone propped up there on the wiper cowl we're gonna see how this is gonna work but first I'm gonna grab my handy dandy blue point air vacuum we're gonna clean up the valley while the pumps out um, wipe it down, just make sure everything's all nice and clean, and then we'll get the pump slapped in. Sorry guys, this might get a little loud. <laughs>
pretty well vacuumed out. I'm gonna go maybe grab a little brake cleaner, maybe a little degreaser, we'll get her wiped down and go from there. I have to grab a scraper here and scrape off some old gasket material from the old injection pump gasket. Just a little skosh of a piece, but always want to make sure you're nice and clean. Definitely don't want to take it back apart. Just put that gasket in. Rather take five extra minutes now rather than an hour or two taking it back apart and doing it all over again. There we go. Like I said, just a little bit. Let's grab this party pump. Kablam! Let's get this guy weaseled into place. Let me find the nuts over here and definitely don't forget your throttle cable bracket, which I have up here on the table. Hmm. Let me dig around and find that real quick. Alright guys, so... I was a complete dingus, and I forgot that when I disassembled the truck, I just unbolted the bracket. And left it all hooked up, right here. Like a retard. 
That is not politically correct. I don't care. I just oh. ruined your YouTube video. Just like that. children. Let's get all these three nuts started. Just get them kind of snug, finger tight at first. Tell you what, this is definitely an easier job with the front clip completely off the truck. One bad thing about having a project apart since last year is finding old bolts. Okay, and there we are, got the pump and the bracket bolted up, everything is just kind of hand tied at the moment. And got the gear set on there, haven't got the bolts in yet. But as you can see, like I was saying, skipping a tooth, here's your timing mark, here's your injection pump timing mark. 
just skipping one tooth this way. So rotate your injection pump gear clockwise one tooth is advancing it on the Chevrolet platform. On a 6973 it's those rotate backwards so it'd be counterclockwise one tooth to advance it a, to advance your pump. But like I said with I'll show you. So in this right here and down there where that plug is there's usually a plunger or a rod right here and a lever and it runs off of this guy when you turn your throttle see it's round on the bottom as you go higher in the RPMs it pushes this rod in and that's for your dynamic timing as your RPMs increase it moves that rod in and the timing increases. I will actually walk you over here to a stock pump I have on this other 6.5 and show you what the rod looks like. This one's actually busted but you can see what I'm talking about down in there. Get this. There we go. So as you Rotate this, you can see where it's curved and where it's been rubbing on it. See the shiny? You can see it's kind of bulged out. As you go higher in the RPMs, oh, you hit this little divot right here. Comes up, hits that. And that in turn pushes that in like that. See? And that's your dynamic timing on the bigger pumps they get away with all that so you just have static timing which is what I was showing you with advancing that one tooth and then up here on your timing marks here on your front cover this right here would be zero degrees and like I said on the Chevrolet application towards the driver's side is advancing towards the passenger is retarding the timing even with that one two skipped we're probably gonna end up fairly close to like there I have a let's walk back over this way again this time to the toolbox and I'll show you the precise way we're gonna do it once the engine's running is it this drawer? Yep, there it is. We have this guy from Blue Point or Snap On. It's a diesel pulse adapter. That's what you see here. It's got this little rubber line. Just dig all the parts out. So, this here, this clamp you clamp to a ground, like your battery ground. And this you actually clamp around your number one injector line for on your mechanical applications. This could even work for 12 valves, 6.9s, 7.3s, 6.2, all that stuff, all the mechanical. Clamp that around, tighten this down, clamp this to a ground, and then you use your normal inductive timing light and you, if, where you would clamp it around a spark plug wire, you clamp it around this, turn this bad Larry on like that, and that's how you can actually use a timing light to time a mechanical diesel engine. Now that's a pretty penny piece there, but if you want to get real precise and if you're going to go down the IDI or mechanical rabbit hole, you definitely want that. Especially when you're trying to do like repeatable um, results and be able to do testing, documentation, stuff like that. You definitely want to have an exact number that you can go off of this and be able to time it. But for now, I know I'm going to need to skip that just from experience from last year. And then we'll be doing adjusting up here, whether it's going to be in center, a little advanced, a little retarded up here. I'm going to assume it's going to be advanced to get close to that 20 degree mark. It'll probably be right about there. So I might just put it either real close to 
lined up up here, maybe a little advanced, and suck the pump down. But like I said, I know for sure that I need to skip this tooth. So we're going to get this gear tightened down, get the pump close to where it's going to be, tighten it down, tighten the bracket down, get the cable hooked up, got to find the E-clip for it. Should be over there in the tool tray. But then the pump will be installed, guys. And then we can, we will probably end up setting the intake manifold on here, not bolting it down quite yet, maybe a bolt or two. But then we can start trying to figure out fuel line routing, probably going to have to convert this to a straight fitting to go under the intake, or maybe if I go sideways like this and 90 it, come out the front, all depends on where I'm going to mount that regulator right here. I don't know if it's going to be mounted on the firewall somewhere for I'll build a bracket off the intake. I really don't want to build one off the intake because there's already a lot going on up here with charge air piping and turbo way back there and stuff like that. So that's kind of why I want to set the intake on so we can kind of see what we have for room. But it's got a pump, guys. Let's put this back in the box. Nice and safe. We'll see you in a little bit. Stay. But I'm going to dig around, find these three bolts, get those tightened on. Probably going to use blue Loctite, tighten those, tighten these bad Larrys. I'm definitely not going to use Loctite on anything like this because I'm going to be adjusting it quite a bit. But definitely blue Loctite these, especially with the higher RPM. I'm the only one that's really tried to spin them as high as I have, so... I'm just doing it for precautionary measures, but I'm going to do it anyways just to be safe. I'd rather have it not need it than need it not have it, like the old saying says. But that CDD pump looks beautiful in there, guys. Like I said, really glad to have, there it is, the party pump. Really glad to have classic diesel designs on board with this heck of a project. Let me dig around, find those bolts, get the gear tightened down. We'll get the pump tightened down. And we will go from there, guys. And there we are, guys. New bolts, locked tight. Got that tightened down, torqued down, ready to go to town. Got these all tight. And like I said, this is kind of a base timing setting. Got throttle cable set up, throttle return spring set up, bracket tight. Um... Yeah, the pump is in, guys. Which, whew. <laughs> Been waiting on that for a while. That, you don't understand how excited that makes me. Um, let me know what you guys thought about actually having a real-time video instead of a time-lapse. Um, I know I was kind of searching for bolts a little bit and uh, looking for... Uh, parts and stuff like that let me know if you guys would rather have that on a time lapse or just say hey stupid be more prepared when you start a video <laughs> which I know I need to be but I thought I had everything over here on the table which I did just had to dig under stuff because I keep adding parts to the table and moving stuff around and um, it doesn't help when you've had a truck tour part since December in the same spot and it's in a working shop and stuff's moving around all the time and stuff like that so got the pump on gears on pumps timed throttle linkage hooked up return spring hooked up next thing will be get my ported intake manifold kind of sit on here maybe a bolt or two in it just kind of clamp her down i have some old intake gaskets too we'll get that so everything will be like it's going to be once it's assembled then we can start mounting up regulator running supply lines um, we need to finish the predator get that bracket on and then we can plumb the whole fuel system and we can go from there but pumps on guys that's a big step so next video will either be injectors injector lines intake stuff like that mountain regulator or the predator either one but thanks for watching guys like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. You know the, you know the drill. Um, thanks for watching. I will catch you guys on the next one.